Good afternoon, Bison fans, and welcome to our Bucknell Women's Soccer Virtual Season Preview Show. My name is Todd Newcomb, and I'm joined today by Maisha Kelly, our Senior Associate AD for Development. And we want to take this opportunity to thank Giant for sponsoring this year's season preview series. Giant has been a great partner of Bison Athletics, and we thank them for all that they do. We've got a great lineup for you today featuring head coach Kelly Cook and three of our current players, Claire Menzi, Bree Kropenak, and Sarah Hazard. Time now to welcome in the head coach of the Bison, Kelly Cook. Thanks for joining us, Kelly. Hey, Todd, I'm Asia. So Kelly's in her sixth season as the head coach of the Bison and has led the team to two Patriot League championships and a 29, 12, and four mark over her first five years at the helm. She graduated from Colgate in 2006 and was a two-year captain and three-time all-league player for the Raiders. It should be noted though, that Kelly has beat the Raiders three times already in her first five years at the helm of the Bison program. So she's doing a great job there. So Kelly, we're gonna set the stage a little bit with some questions from Maisha about your team's return to play. Coach, great to see you. Good to have you here this afternoon. So we're going to jump right in, knowing that there has been extensive planning and preparation to get to this point where we are going to return to play and, and have some uh, a soccer season. But in order to do so, we know that there are daily protocols the team has to follow as, as well as the staff does as you all engage together. Can you just share some of what those daily protocols are for all of you? Yeah, um, first off, I'd like to say, you know, I've been incredibly um proud and, and, and pleased with our group. Um, they've been doing a great job following these protocols and, and um, adapting to it. So a couple of things that we're doing a little bit differently. Um, we have some limits in the locker room um, in terms of how many women can be there um, in, in there at one time together. So they're doing a great job of kind of doing some shifts um, coming in and out of there um, using uh, public locker room space as well. Um, they're masking at all times. So whether they're going out for a run um, in, in the town or they're on the field competing or in the locker room, um, they're masking at all, all times. They're doing a great job of socially distancing. Um, they're especially thinking about transition periods. So when we're leaving the field, when we're walking to and from places, um, staying within small groups and, and making sure that um, when we are together, we're in small groups and, and socially distance. And then, you know, we've been um, Zoom meeting um, quite a bit. So when we're connecting as a team, um, as a whole, um, or even individual meetings, we're doing them over Zoom and um, connecting that way. So they've been great adapting to all the, the changes. And those are just a, a few off the top of my head that I could think of. Great. So we know that part of this planning also had to do with trying to develop a schedule and a Patriot League schedule in particular to get to the point where we could have teams engaging and, and even getting to a Patriot League tournament. Can you share what you and your peers, so fellow head coaches in the Patriot League, the input you had in that process and just how you all sort of navigated and talked about not only just setting up contests, but even should a team have to pivot as a result of positive tests? Sure. Um, you know, our, uh, our coaches group has met with the Patriot League a couple times and then also um, independent of the Patriot League, um, just on some Zoom calls to, to chat through this time. And, and, you know, all of us agree and I'm, a, you know, a huge proponent of trying to get the best experience out of this year. Um, so what does that look like? Um, that means being really flexible, um, being able to uh, make changes on the fly, adapt. Um, we might play an opponent we haven't scouted. Um, or something like that, um, but just being willing to, you know, put our student athletes first and be able to create an experience that's memorable and positive under, um, you know, these circumstances in the time we're being. And, you know, I think the coaches in the league all feel that and, you know, are willing to, you know, sacrifice maybe a little bit um, in some ways that we would normally prepare to get uh, a game in that maybe we wouldn't normally have to reschedule quickly because of positives or changes in our schedule. So, you know, the student athlete experience right now is our number one priority and, and being able to put them out on the field to compete, which is what they want to do. They love to do it, um, but in a safe way. Yeah. So we haven't played a contest since uh, last fall. So there certainly has not been even the lead up time in the preseason and planning like we typically, it's always the moving in August and you have some good time together in a preseason. This is certainly looking very different. Not not only just the way the schedule will play out, but even preparation for it. 
any thoughts on or observations that you've been able to see from just challenges the women have had from a physical or mental standpoint as this season has progressed and moved forward over the last year and we've been in this environment and then just how your, your thoughts on how they've risen to the occasion to get ready here sure um i'll you know i'll speak to the physical side first um huge challenges in in regards to this um idea you know soccer is a, a sport you gotta be fit um you, you gotta come in in shape i mean it's a 90 minute game and there's you know limited subbing so you know i think physically having to prepare all summer for a season and then obviously not having the season and then going into the winter and saying okay amp it up again we need to prepare again um that's a lot of um you know a lot of time where they're really focused in on coming in and in the best shape possible um and that's physically draining and it, and it can be mentally draining as well um just having that you know um that goal of coming in into a season and being prepared and fit. So physically, um, definitely a, a stress. I think a lot of them have learned to be creative in their workouts. So maybe they're used to training with a team or working with an individual trainer or at going to the gym. They've had to get really creative in how to do that when gyms were closed and they weren't able to access the teams that they normally play for. So, um, you know, really excited to see a lot of them got creative in the way they were getting their workouts in and you know, figuring, dragging a brother or sister out with them to do it. And so, um, you know, and then, you know, mentally, I think just the challenges of the unknown of not knowing when they're going to be able to play and compete um, is, is incredibly challenging from everyone from freshmen to seniors um, and, and not being able to be together and connect has been incredibly hard for them. But I want to, I want to flip it to the positive because I cannot, um, I cannot, believe how resilient um, and adaptable the group has been and I'm so proud of it um, you know they when we've met there's been definitely times on zoom where they've vented and been frustrated but we always end the zoom and, and coming up with solutions to things to problems and coming up with um, how to adapt and, and make the most of the situation and I think they're doing an incredible job of adapting and, and, you know, a generation that maybe some of us older folks, you know, characterize sometimes as being soft. Um, and they, they are showing me every day how resilient of a group and how um, strong they're being through this time, the ups and downs and being there for each other. So I, I couldn't be more happy with um, the 27 women I get to work with and see on Zoom. And, um, you know, that's my goal is to get them back out and competing and doing what they love to do. Um, because it has been a challenging road mentally and physically. Um, but, you know, through it all, they've been there together. And I think it speaks to a lot of um, our team culture and, and how they treat one another and, and motivate one another. So Kelly, Maisha mentioned we last saw the team on the field in 2019. And boy, was that a season of tightly contested games. Uh, in fact, I think 14 of the 18 games were decided by a single goal or, or, or ended in a draw. When you know games in the Patriot League are going to be that tight, what are some of the keys to coming out on top? Sure, um, that's a great question. I think one of the reasons I love the league so much um, from my time as a player in it to now coaching in the league is um, on any given day, any team can be any other team in the league. And it's been like that for a really long time, which makes it you know, so incredibly fun to coach and I'm sure and, and play when I played and I'm sure our players would agree. Um, you know, so going into every game, knowing that there's no guarantee win or loss, um, you know, creates um, each week in practice an opportunity to create this competitive culture. Um, and I think that the way you train um, and how we design our practices is, is crucial for performing in those pressure moments. So in practices, we try to set up as many competitive um, type scenarios. You know, your team goes into, if we're playing a scrimmage in practice, will give a team a goal up advantage or a goal down advantage. So now you have to perhaps adjust your playing style um, given the circumstances so that, you know, on Saturday when we kick off, if we go down a goal, we're used to it because we've done it in practice. Um, if you're up a goal, how do you play? And it's not only how you play in terms of the physical game, but the mental game. Mentally, when you're down a goal, what is your mentality? When you're up a goal, what is your mentality? And, you know, we, we spent some time, um, you know, this past uh, two weeks ago, we did a, a Zoom session um, where we listened to Dr. Colleen Hacker, who's one of the leading sports psychologists. She works with the women's national team here uh, in the U.S. and, you know, talked about mental toughness. Um, you know, it's really easy to lead and perform when things are going well. 
Um, but when things aren't going well and you're facing adversity, um, and, and speaking of adversity, I mean, this, this year has been a lot of adversity. So how do you lead and how do you perform in those, in those uh, moments where the, it's tough? Um, and, and what does it take to have that focus to finish out a game? Um, it's an exhausting long match, a soccer game, especially when you hit overtimes. Um, but so many games, you look at the statistics are won or lost in the last minutes, in the final minutes, and the teams that are able to perform in those final minutes of a half or a game um, are those that are so successful. So we've had plenty of overtime wins in, in my time here. And, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, something we think about a lot in our training to create an environment where they're competing and having to perform under that pressure. So when we hit game day on Saturday, um, we're able to do that. And we know what it takes to, to get on the other side of that, um, that victory. There is no doubt that the challenges have been many in the, this group. And I'm not surprised that the group of 27 women you get to work with are rising to the occasion and certainly um, you know, resilient individuals. Uh, another challenge that, of course, comes in this environment and when we're deciding to compete in soccer is that it's winter. I hesitate to use the word spring, as we know that this has been an onslaught of snow here in Lewisburg this year. But so playing, there's challenges of playing soccer this time of year and the abbreviated season. So what, what are you looking to get out of this season for this team, and then even as you just continue building your programs going forward? Sure. Um, I think I mentioned it earlier in one of the questions, but you know, first, um, my number one priority is just the student athlete experience, um, specifically thinking about um, our senior class who two of the members will be joining later, um, just creating um, you know, a, a memorable positive experience for them the best way we can. Um, so you know, that's in training. Um, I've been trying to loop them into you know, figure out what their, you know, needs are, what their wants are in terms of what does the season look like for them um, and, and making sure we can meet, you know, as best we can, what their expectations are for this abbreviated winter spring season. Um, you know, some of the other goals for sure would just be development. Um, one of the things is, you know, we're ha we have uh, a, a maybe a younger team just looking at the number of underclassmen and you know, getting them used to what it's like to train um, the culture of the program, competing in games. Um, you know, everyone on this team wants to compete. And so that's, you know, our priority is getting back out and hopefully getting some games against some great opponents and um, getting them that experience of what it's like in those final minutes of a game to try to pull off a victory or come from behind win. And, and so, you know, creating a great experience, being as competitive as we as we can be. Um, and, and then, you know, something for me is for the future is getting some development and experience under some of the players that maybe haven't seen the field as much, whether they're freshmen or just haven't, um, underclassmen that haven't seen as much time. Coach, time now for us to get the scoop on the 2021 team. So if you can, from back to front, starting with the goalkeeper, tell us who to be on the lookout for at each position. Sure. Um, you know, goalkeeper, we return our starting goalkeeper from last year. She was a freshman. Kaylee Donnelly had a really successful career and we have, you know, two other goalkeepers right now pushing really hard and challenging. So, um, you know, that's a spot that's always a, is always a battle and it's always a fun battle to watch in practice. And you know, they go from training against each other to, um, you know, competing for the spot. And so look forward to see how that battle comes comes out this year. Um, our back line is probably the most experienced um, of the groups returning, um, returning three starters in the back line, um, Chloe Christakos, Holly um, Burns, and Leanne Engelman, uh, and then um, have uh, Claire uh, Mency returning from injury and um, and some others that are returning from injury. So that group has had a, quite a bit of experience. So we look to have some great leadership in the back um, and probably be one of the stronger parts of our, our group going forward. Um, last year was excellent for our midfield um, group because they were rather inexperienced. And I would say they got a lot of experience in, in last year's year. So um, looking forward to returning um, 
uh, Sarah Hazard, P.D. Nacetta, and Abby Gearhart, who were the kind of three last year that played a huge role and um, had some others that contributed as well and, and have some uh, incoming freshmen that could also potentially contribute to the line. Um, that's probably the deepest we've been in the midfield in, in some years. So that will, that will be exciting um, to see kind of how that plays out through the year. And then finally, um, the strikers who um, I'm, I'm partial because I was a striker. Um, we have two seniors in that group, uh, Jenna Merrick and Brie Kropenak, who have scored some big time goals for us and played a lot of minutes in their career. Um, and then we have some up and coming younger players, um, uh, Riley Donaldson and, and Emmeline Parham, who had um, some good showings and some quality experience. Um, and then also some potential freshmen that could contribute right away to that area. So. Um, you know, we have the nice part is we have some balanced experience with seniors in all three positions, um, maybe not goalkeeping, but um, we have a returning goalkeeper that saw quite a bit of time last year. So, um, you know, this group, I think, um, compared to last year's group, um, just a little bit more experienced um, in terms of minutes played and, and also leadership throughout the lines, which is um, always important when you look at, you know, having leaders spread out through your team. Um, and that's something that I think will be, um, you know, really important for us, especially in this abbreviated season. Coach, you mentioned uh, senior center back Chloe Christakis, and she was just recently named the preseason Patriot League team, the all Patriot League team. And so can you talk about her progression through her playing years as being a substitute her first two years to her junior season and now being recognized as one of the top defenders in the league? Yeah, I, um, you know, Chloe's worked incredibly hard over her four years to continue to improve. Um, you know, one of my goals as a coach is always to see a player come in as a freshman and, and then when they graduate as a senior, leave a better player. Um, and I think Chloe has done just that. And she is, um, you know, a good leader in the back. She's also very dangerous on set pieces. Um, so she's uh, able to get on the end of a lot of our corner kicks, which um, in our game can be a huge difference maker. If you're a team that's dangerous on set pieces, um, it can definitely put you uh, apart, separate you from some of the other teams in the league. And Chloe brings that um, attacking mentality um, to our set paces um, based on her ability in the air. Um, so, you know, she's a good vocal leader and, and has that ability to score goals on the other end, which you, you know, center back's first priority is keeping the ball out of the back of the net and, and being a good 1v1 defender. And then when you have one that is dangerous in the air and can score, it's an added bonus. And I think, um, you know, that is, is been a great asset for us um, and having Chloe on the field. So coach, our final question for you today comes from one of our viewers and you probably were going to, you're probably going to recognize this name, but it's from Jessica in Philadelphia. Mm, he wants I, to know, What's been the biggest challenge during the postponing of the fall season and the shift to a spring season? That's a great question. Um, you know, I think for me, um, the biggest challenge and, and, you know, as a coach personally has been, you know, just motivating the group and, and continuing to provide, you know, messaging that, um, you know, we're going to get there. And, and that for me has been really challenging, but I think that our team has been incredible um, responding to the adversity and adapting. Um, so perhaps I don't need as much motivation as I feel like I need to give them uh, at times. But, you know, I think, um, you know, not seeing each other, not being around each other, trying to instill the values and culture with the incoming freshmen without being at practice every day. And, um, you know, doing things over Zoom has been incredibly challenging for somebody who just wants to get the group together and be in a space all, all together. Um, but I think the other piece, and this is something that probably, you know, for the viewers out there that you don't think about is just also planning for recruiting. Um, we're working on our class of 22s. Um, and right now, I don't know our freshmen as well as I would normally have. Um, and, you know, then we have another class of 21s incoming, a lot of which we recruited through film and, and not live because of the pandemic. So, you know, it's definitely also ch made a challenging um, um, scenario for recruiting, just knowing the players that you have, where are they going to play, what kind of role are they going to play, and then planning for the future is probably one that, you know, our players and maybe, you know, viewers, alums, parents don't necessarily think about. But um, so that's a, another piece separate from the team piece. But, um, you know, from from my 
uh, job. Uh, that's definitely a piece that, you know, has changed in the COVID era. I'm watching a lot of film these days. A lot of film, a lot of Zooms. Uh, I, don't know, I think I'll get tired of Zooms. <laughs> But Kelly, we want to really uh, thank you for taking the time out today to join us and wish you and the team the best of luck this spring. Awesome. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Maisha. Absolutely. All right. Time now to welcome our three current players to today's program. Good afternoon, ladies. Hello. Thanks for having Hi. us. Hi. So our first guest today is junior defender, Claire Menzi, who's from Katona, New York, and she attended Summers High School. Thanks for joining us today, Claire. Thank you. Can you start us off by telling us a little bit about your recruiting story and how you wound up uh, playing soccer for Bucknell? Sure. Um, so I played for one club pretty much my entire career, um, New York Soccer Club. I played there for about four or five years, and then I switched to a club out in Long Island, New York, which was about two hours from where I lived. So I went out there three times a week to practice, um, which was definitely a trek, but um, I landed up at a few Bucknell camps um, early in my sophomore year. And then later in my sophomore year, finally got in front of the coaches at the PDA tournament in New Jersey where Sarah Hazard played. And then um, from there went on a visit and then ended up at Bucknell. I knew from the second I left my unofficial visit that this was the place that I wanted to be. Um, I felt at home with the girls that I was put with. They were actually the seniors here when I was a freshman. So that was definitely a cool experience to kind of get to know the girls through my whole process. And then we came on our unofficial visit in the fall with Bree and Sarah's class. So that was definitely a fun experience and I've loved every minute since. Claire, you uh, came in and had a really great start to 2000, in 2018 to your collegiate career and then as um you know dealt with some injuries and so given your progression back to play physically what have been some of the biggest challenges that you faced just in that process but also now kind of with this past year as the backdrop yeah so um for anyone that doesn't know um i tore my acl my freshman fall um i suffered a concussion on our first patriot league game um that was definitely tough. Um, came in as a freshman, hit the ground running, was super excited for the opportunity to play. Um, I stepped up into that role and was so grateful for it. Um, the concussion definitely threw a wrench in things and I was itching to get back. And then the game I got back, I did tear my ACL that game. So that was definitely one that was definitely hard um, to dream of playing college soccer whole life and then it to be taken away in five seconds is definitely tough. But um, my freshman year, Sarah was a big part of it for me. Um, she also was dealing with injury and we spent a lot of time together and she really helped me through a lot of it. So I owe a lot of that to her. But um, then I came back my sophomore year and did the same thing. So got cleared and came back and tore it again. So the hardships of that were just pretty much really mental for a really long time. Um, just like every time I felt like I took a step forward, I just took five back. So with uh, surgery complications and then a lot, a lot of PT. Um, and I had all of my teammates, they were so supportive throughout the whole thing, but it was just definitely hard to sit on the side and just watch all this happen and know that I couldn't do anything about it. So I just knew I had to make an impact in some way and I wanted to be on this team and I wanted to be back on that field more than anything. So I'm really, really grateful that I finally made it hopefully. <laughs> and that uh, things move uh, swiftly going forward. But mentally, it was definitely a big hurdle to overcome. Um, I really had to learn how to ask for help and that was really tough for me. But um, I think that was some of the best advice that I got from teammates and coaches, but has definitely helped me in the long run. Claire, we, we certainly hope you're gonna stay healthy this season and wish you the best of luck on that front. Thank you. you play a defensive role on the team, but with your strong leg, you also facilitate a lot of goal scoring chances on restarts and long balls over the top to the forwards. Two parts to this question, how'd you develop such a strong leg and how great does it feel when you contribute to a goal? Um, I would probably attribute that to 
uh, when I started club, um, I played center back when I started and it wasn't very exciting when you're younger, when there's not many people coming at you. So I convinced my coach to let me play forward for a while. So for about two years, I played forward, believe it or not. Um, and I spent a lot of time doing shooting and anything attacking. So the shooting drills that we do now at practice are my favorite. Everybody knows that. Um, but yeah, just lots and lots of reps. Um, I love anything in front of goal. Um, I don't get to be in front of goal very often now. So when I do get the chance, it's very exciting. But um, being at Bucknell and being able to contribute to some goals has definitely been exciting. I mean, Sarah and Brie know there's nothing more exciting than scoring a goal for our team. So um, being able to be part of corner kicks or free kicks, anything close to the box, anything that I can help contribute to, I'm really excited to do. And I try to take a lot of time to practice that stuff because I know it can be a game changer. Like Kelly said, a lot of our games are one goal games and a corner kick could mean everything to us. So I think that making sure that I'm solid in that aspect and that I can provide when the time comes is super important to me. The Bison have a really a very strong defensive group this year. And so what is your assessment of how that group is shaping up and what can we look forward to? I mean, the group, it's definitely growing, which is exciting how much depth we now have in the back. Um, obviously, Holly and Chloe did a fantastic job um, the past two years being in the center back. Um, I mean, they're huge players for us. And I'm really lucky and excited to be able to compete with them for those spots and to play alongside of them. And then our outside backs, I mean, we have Leanne coming back and Alana Carlucci who plays a huge role for us. Um, I think coming from a big clubs like PDA and Stars, uh, we all played really similarly growing up. So I think transitioning that here has been huge for us and definitely has helped. And then we do have some freshmen that have come in and I'm really excited to see how they kind of fit into that and how we can use them and utilize them. I think they could play big roles for us. So I'm definitely excited to finally get back out there and competing for those spots. And I think we could definitely have a great back line going to Patriot League and could be very successful with it. So Claire, our last question for you today is also from a viewer, and this is from in Virginia. It's a two part question. First part is with your team achieving such a high GPA, how do your student athletes balance soccer and academics? I'll let you answer that and then I'll ask the second part. Um, obviously Bucknell is a very high caliber academic school and we have a variety of majors on our team in all three schools here between management, engineering and arts and sciences. So everyone's super supportive on the team and you know, a lot of us upperclassmen have been through most of the classes provided here or through every department. So everyone is super supportive, whether it's when you're picking classes, teammates are there to help you. Um, we even have a bunch of classes with each other. I know I've had class with Sarah before multiple times, so that's always been fun. But um, I think we always put our academics first, whether we know we have a game coming up and we're traveling, like people try to get their stuff done beforehand. And Kelly's very encouraging with that and is always super supportive along with the rest of the coaches. But we always make sure that that's what's happening first, whether you're going to office hours or doing your homework early. But then when it comes time to soccer, that's what we're focusing on and kind of separating the two. So I think keeping that balance, um, super important for us. And I think going forward, holding ourselves to that high standard can only benefit us. The second part of the question is, uh, how would you describe your team culture? Um, I love our team. I think we have a great team culture. Um, I love how the whole divide between what grade you're in isn't really existent on our team when it comes to making friendships and being teammates with each other. I think it is totally normal for us to see our freshmen and our seniors hanging out or our sophomores and seniors, anyone in between. Everyone's really supportive of each other, which is super awesome. And I think we really uh, keep soccer at soccer. And then when we get outside of soccer, we kind of leave that so it doesn't carry into anything, which I think is super beneficial for us and allows us to separate anything and really just focus on our friendships when we're outside of it. And I know I'm still friends with the seniors when I was a freshman. So I think when they alumni come back and everyone can still intermingle, it's a super great experience. And I think the coaches are a huge part of that and it provided the space and experience for us to do that. Claire, thanks so much for your time today. And Thank best you. of luck to you this season. Thank you. All right, we're gonna turn our attention to Bree next. And Bree is from Swansboro, North Carolina, where she attended Swansboro High School. Welcome, Bree. Thanks for being here. Thank you. So how did you wind up at Bucknell from North Carolina? 
Uh, it's kind of a long story. Um, I knew that I wanted to play Division One soccer. Um, I was looking at a couple really big schools um, all over the South, mainly North Carolina, Florida, that area, a lot warmer than here. Um, I actually like got a couple offers my sophomore year and I was just not ready to commit. Um, so I kept looking and I ended up at a random showcase tournament in like the spring of my junior year. Um, I remember I almost didn't even go because it was like mid high school season for us and I loved high school soccer so much, like, like amazing experience. Um, but I ended up going to Jeff Cup, which is in Virginia. And um, it was really crappy weather that weekend. Um, David Madsen, our assistant coach is there. And he told me, whenever we talk about the story now, he tells me that he almost left Jeff Cup and because it was so crappy and just went back home. But he ended up staying. Um, my game was the last game at the end of the showcase. And David saw me, reached out. And I remember calling my dad and being like, what in the heck is Bucknell University? Where is it? Um, what division is it? Should I go there? Came up here and just absolutely fell in love with it. Um, yeah, and the rest is history, I guess. That's awesome. Well, Bree, as a senior captain on the team, how have you helped lead the team this past year? I'm not gonna lie, it's been extremely tough. Um, I would say last year as a junior captain with a pretty regular year, um, I was more of a supporting role for our two senior captains, Allie and Gabby at the time. They were both fantastic captains and I was kind of just like there to just like, yeah, you guys are such good captains <laughs> and support them as much as possible. But after they left in the spring, it was kind of just me for a while. Um, and then obviously with COVID, um, we all got sent home and yeah, it was, it's just been really tough to try to keep the team motivated as well as try to keep myself motivated um, and try to like take care of my own mental health as well as make sure that I'm providing what I can for my teammates. Luckily this year, Claire's been absolutely fantastic and literally everything. There's been days where I've called her and been like, Claire, this is your problem. I'm not dealing with this. Um, and she always jumps right in there. So it's definitely been a challenge, but I'd say the support that the team offers me. I mean, beyond Claire, there's been multiple nights where I've even gone to Sarah and other seniors on the team and been like, this is this is our senior year. Like we have to lead this together. It's not just a me and Claire thing. It's an us thing. Um, so I think just the support and the, the willingness of other teammates to step up has really been important this year. So Bria, you're part of an attacking unit that was pretty young last year. Uh, how has that group progressed and what do you think are some of the keys to generating more goals this season? I think um, the group has progressed and obviously experienced as everybody's talked about. Um, but I also think that we're just really hungry. I think last year, not or ending the season with not as many goals as any of us would have liked um, has made this upcoming season, even if it seems so far away, it's made it even more just like, oh, I want to score goals so bad. Um, so I think if anything right now, we're just so hungry to come back out and play, score some goals. Um, yeah. Bree, we've as insiders to the department have heard the really cool story about your participation in goals for girls program and how you've traveled and worked with that organization but for our fans and even just talking about how your work has what your work has looked like this past year through the pandemic um can you just illuminate a bit more about what it is and and have you been able to engage this past year yeah um so I work for an organization called Goals for Girls. I am considered like a part-time travel trainer. Basically, um, it is a nonprofit organization that works to empower young women from underprivileged backgrounds and uh, mostly in Salt Lake City, Utah, um, Johannesburg, South Africa, and Nagpur, India. Um, so I've gone to India twice and I've gone to South Africa once. And basically my job there is I lead different leadership lessons. Um, so I'm like well-versed in confidence lessons. I talk about public speaking um, as well as goal setting lessons, um, as well as I play soccer with a bunch of girls from all over the world, which is amazing. Um, I absolutely love the organization and have been like so thankful to have been a part of it. Um, and even during the pandemic, we've been doing stuff online. So this summer we had a virtual summit for literally anybody <laughs> like all around the world. We had people from South Africa, from India, from the United States, from England, like literally everywhere. 
um, where all of the travel trainers came together and had compiled about like four to five hours worth of videos of different lessons, different soccer skills, stuff like that. Um, actually, we just launched this past weekend, I believe we had a summit in India, um, an online summit in India. So we had some people waking up at like 4 a.m. to like go do like opening circles with girls from Nagpur, India, which was absolutely fantastic. I applaud them for waking up so early. I did like I did like transcribing stuff for them when they woke up early. <laughs> um, but it has been obviously very difficult with the pandemic um, and travel restrictions and obviously worrying about people's safety. But luckily we do have things like Zoom and um, virtual stuff that we can upload videos on. So it's been doable. Bree, that's great work you do there. Keep that up. That's awesome. So we're going to close out your session today with a question from one of our viewers. And this one's from Tom, who's right here in Lewisburg. And he says, with a shortened schedule this spring, how difficult do you think it's going to be jumping right into Patriot League conference play? And which team will be your toughest competition? I think... I think it's going to be difficult coming right into the Patriot League Conference, um, but I also think that there are a lot of programs and schools that are facing a lot of the challenges that we are facing right now. Um, obviously, like personally, just like obviously nervous about coming in and playing contact, um, how that's going to look, and I'm sure that's like on the minds of all of our teammates or all of my teammates, um, as well as other schools in the, in the conference. I think our biggest challenge this year, I think they're always our biggest challenge is Navy. Um, I think Navy had the luxury of playing a couple games in the fall. Um, I think they played Pitt a couple times and maybe somebody else. Um, they've also, from what I've heard, they haven't really skipped a beat too much with like training, whereas like we've been put on pause and then thrown back in and then put on pause and then small group. Um, so I think Navy is definitely a tough one. Um, we were actually supposed to be playing them this weekend, but it's I believe it got postponed. So um whenever that comes around that will definitely be a good matchup well it might be a good thing not to have to worry about them first get your legs underneath you and then take it to the mids um exactly. but if there's any group that can rise to the challenge i'm sure it's you and your teammates and, and brie thanks so much uh, for being here today thank you all right and now we're going to bring on sarah she's our last of the three players today sarah thanks for being here thank you for having me she is a senior midfielder from Flemington, New Jersey, and she attended Hunterdon Central High School. Maisha, I'll kick it to you. All right, Sarah, great to see you. First question, how excited are you and your teammates to get back onto the pitch this season for some competition? I was actually just thinking about this, uh, like while Bree was talking, I am just so excited to put it all out there. I don't plan on holding back a single thing this season, whether we get to play three games, four games, whether we get them all in, hopefully we do. Um, I just think about how when I was a little girl, I wanted to be where I am, exactly where I am right now, playing um, college soccer. And then I think about how when I was a freshman, I wanted to be the seniors. I looked up to people like Megan Holtz and Maddie Mulford, and I'm like, shoot, like I'm here. What am I going to do about it? So. <laughs> Um, for myself personally, I am just so excited to get my final shot on the soccer field. Um, definitely gonna, definitely gonna be a, an emotional semester. I'm um, doing so, but I'm just so excited to get back out there. And I know uh, my fellow seniors definitely feel the same way. Um, and I know everybody else is excited as well. Um, every class, whether you're a freshman to a senior, everybody's had something taken away from them during this. So um, we just feel really fortunate to be able to get out there and train and then play some games. So Sarah, you earned a starting role last season and now you're one of the veterans in the midfield. How do you think your game has progressed during your first three seasons as a member of the program? Um, I'd say my game has more so progressed mentally more than anything. Um, Kelly could tell you the same thing. Um, I used to be a little bit of a head case, maybe still am, but um, my freshman and sophomore year, I think I was just, sophomore year I ended up uh, tearing an ACL actually as Claire had mentioned, but um, even so, I was just more kind of reserved, more uh, held back, and I just didn't really like, I didn't like rise to the occasion, I would say. And then junior year, I was um, finally put in a role where I was expected to rise to the occasion. Um, otherwise, I would uh, have minutes taken away from me. So I, I think I, I did just that. And then coming in 
last fall when we uh, got the chance to start training a little bit, um, I just realized how much more confident I was. Um, I think the freshman year me is worlds different than the person that I am now. Um, if I was a freshman, I'd probably be too nervous to like join the Zoom call or whatnot. Now I feel like I can just walk into my coach's offices, give him a call whenever. Um, and I think that translates to the field, which really helps my game. I've always been a pretty technical player. Um, so I don't think I've changed much in that sense, but um, I just have a newfound confidence, especially being a senior. Um, it just makes me want to like lead the younger players um, and also just uh, do the sport that I love, that I've loved since I was a kid. Um, and being a senior makes me definitely realize that. So I'm just trying to take advantage of every moment. Sarah, you and Holly Burns actually have an extended leadership role for the women's soccer program as you're the student athlete advisory committee reps. So can you share with us what it's like to work with other student athletes in the department and then what initiatives the group is working on and trying to have in implemented for this year? Mm -hmm. um, so being a part of SAC is really cool because it gives me just another network um, that I can be a part of which is especially nice right now when we are pretty limited with the people that we can see. So just being able to talk to um, student athletes on other teams about what they might be going through. We actually had a staff meeting last night and I loved what they did. I, I think it was Jen's idea. Um, thanks, Jen. Uh, they split us into classes and just had us um, talk about how we're feeling, what we're going through right now, because um, as she saw it, every class seems to be experiencing it a little bit differently, feels a little differently. So um, I love being a part of SAC. It just gives me so many people to talk to and um, a lot of my really good friends on other teams are in SAC, so that's really nice. And then in terms of initiatives, we have been a little bit restricted just because um, one of the things we had in the making a couple weeks ago was um, bringing little care packages to the hotel um, for students in isolation housing, but um, they've taken away the um, ability to bring food, which I understand. So um, we're right now we're in the process of doing something else, um, possibly bringing um, little craft kits from the maker space on 7th Street. Um, so they have those kits. So we're thinking about having those delivered. And then I'm a part of the um, uh, health and wellness committee. So we look at, at a lot of um, mental, the mental side of things. So another thing we're hoping we'll get to do is bring in the therapy dogs uh, later in the semester. Um, so we're actually just starting to discuss initiatives now, but those are some, some things in the works. So Sarah, how do you see the team shaping up this spring and maybe who are some of the players that the Bison fans should be looking out for? And maybe in particular, maybe some of the first years who you think might will make, make an impact? Mm -hmm. Um, I think the team is is looking really good. I know we only had a week of consistent kind of practices and conditioning, but it was it was different. It was different than any other year I've been here. Um, I don't know, maybe the upperclassmen have changed their attitudes. I know my attitude around fitness has definitely developed a lot since I was a freshman, um, but we showed up to our first conditioning session. It was a timed mile. Nobody was complaining. Nobody was hemming and hawing. Like it was just, it was different. Everybody just got out there, did it, completed it to the best of their abilities. Um, and everybody was smiling and laughing during my mile. I was like talking to the people around me. Um, maybe I would have ran a little faster if I wasn't doing that. I don't know. But um, I just think the attitude that everybody has brought in so far is outstanding. It's just, everybody's so excited and everybody's so happy to be here. And I think that's definitely going to translate to the field because you have to be excited about what you do to do it well. So, um, and then in terms of first years, we have a really good first year class. Um, we have Leah Tarzi, who I think has um, a great potential to impact the back line. She is so fast. Um, she's just a really good defender. I, I get intimidated going up against her. Uh, don't tell her that. So um, I think she's one that we could definitely look out for. And then um, another person who I'll talk about because she's a midfielder is uh, Kanar. She is really strong. Um, I think she bodied me a couple of times in the fall. So um, I think she definitely has the chance to make an impact in the midfield as well, not only with her physicality, but she's also a very technical player and has really good vision. So uh, those, are, those are some first years I would say to keep an eye on. Coach might be planning that time mile uh, makeup run. So 
be, be careful there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you mentioned that you, challenging yourself and thinking about yourself, what kind of senior do you want to be? And so let's dig in on that a little bit and share what are some what's some of the messaging that you've given to the underclassmen to navigate through this past year. Mm -hmm. So this past year has been super unique for um, the underclassmen, obviously. Um, so the senior I want to be, I'm not a designated captain. So I want to make sure that the team knows that they can come to me, the underclassmen. I was just uh, texting a few of them the other day. Um, I don't want them to feel alone during this time because um, especially with all the restrictions, can't really go anywhere. I know how easy it is to feel alone. So I've just been trying to make sure that they know they, they have a friend in me, a teammate, a peer, someone to vent to, someone to take them to go get coffee or whatever it may be. Um, and I think not being a designated captain kind of helps that role a little bit because um, some people don't want to bring their problems to someone with authority. So I think being able to step down from that really does help me um, as a role model for the underclassmen. Not that Claire and Brie are not role models because they are, but um, I think it just um, helps people be a little more comfortable, which is awesome. Um, so I just want to be the, the type of person that's there for everybody but I also wanna be someone that um, they have to respect. So I, I think that's one thing I, I really like about myself is that I'll be goofy in the locker room or um, I think I was voted funniest on the team one year, whatever. But um, as soon as I get on the field, I, I have a, a really strong ability to just flip a switch. And um, I, don't, I don't think it's in anyone's best interest to mess with me once I get into that zone. Um, so I, I'm very versatile in that way. So I think that makes me really approachable off the field, but respectable on the field. So um, that's the type of player I want to continue to be this last season. Well, Sarah, I'm glad that you have grown and have the confidence to join us here this afternoon. And really, we are all rooting for the very best season as you conclude your career here along with your fellow seniors and and just the best of luck to you all thank you yes yeah, sarah i'll tell you right now your your energy is contagious i'm ready to go out on the <laughs> so i'm well, glad thanks, thanks thanks to all of our guests for being here today i want to thank them for that and this that'll just about wrap up our show thank you to jeffrey campbell john terry and jess o'shaughnessy for their assistance with today's event our next event in our season preview series sponsored by Giant will be tomorrow, Thursday, February 25th at noon, and that will feature the men's tennis program. As a reminder, you can see the complete schedule of all of our preview shows on our website, BucknellBison.com. Thanks for joining us today, and go Bison!